Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome again to Todd Clint's SharePoint Podcast, number 291, recorded live Monday, May 2nd, 2016, CE. I am your host, Todd Clint. I'll be your guide for the rest of the afternoon, or at least the next 20, 30 minutes or so. Um, and I come to you bearing gifts from the fine folks at Rackspace.com. Uh, they are my employer, and the gift is the gift of knowledge, the gift of understanding. I will impart this gift upon you for the rest of this podcast. While I'm doing that, you know, 90 some percent of you consume this audio only. Good choice, by the way. Um, while you're doing that, you've got the audio pumping in. As long as you're not in your car or you're on a bicycle or something, go ahead and open up a browser. You know, have this going in one ear, a browser, and, and point that browser at sharepoint.rackspace.com and see about the great things going on there. Got some things going on this week. You're going to want to check that page. There might be some changes going on. I don't know. Don't want to commit myself to much, but uh, sharepoint.rackspace.com. And then while you're there, it doesn't cost you anything extra. Go to rackspace.com slash Microsoft and see what else we've got going on. And then I also have a website, toddclint.com. We would love to have you there. I'm uh, I'm running Google Analytics on there, so I would love you guys to I'd like to see your little 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 things on the graph, your little points. So jump on on there to uh, toddclint.com slash blog. That's where all this mess is at. toddclint.com slash netcast is where the home for this is at. And then you can find me on Twitter at Todd Clint. I'm also on Instagram at Todd Clint, and I believe I responded my second Instagram comment this uh, this last week. So I have now uh, commented twice on Instagram, never posted anything, mostly just use it to uh, stalk my friends and uh, things like that. So that's all of that um, for uh, that. So for production notes, I come to you with a heavy heart. Uh, the last three weeks, I was on the road for two weeks of that. And then last week we had some technical difficulties and it is just a big old mess. And uh, so I apologize for that. Hopefully get that straightened out here in the next couple of days. For now, though, as of Monday, with the, the recording of this one, I'm, of course, now another podcast behind, which is exactly what I want when I'm already behind. But for now, the podcasts are caught up. The bulk of my listeners and all that, my, my audience is audio. So I went ahead and made sure that those were all out. MP3s are all out. The videos and YouTube are in various states of uploading and not uploading uh, Schrodinger's cat video type of things, but we should get that uh, straightened out here uh, in the next little bit. A couple of things uh, slowed me down. Number one, just lazy and I suck at uh, producing podcasts. But number two, the two weeks that Shane did it, the audio was not great. And I'm not talking about Shane's voice, which has a bit of a grading quality about it. Uh, but I'm talking about there was like his his equipment, there was like a background noise and all that. <laughs> well, go ahead and listen to him. Go ahead and listen to two, uh, 289 and 290 or 288 and 289, whichever they were, and, and see for yourself. But uh, there was a little bit of that. So I fought with that a little bit. I was obviously gone and then came back and tried to fight with that a little bit and, and had some um, uh, not great luck with that. And then on top of it, while I was uh, talking crap to Shane about how terrible uh, this was and and all that. Then last week when I recorded number uh, 290, my internet connection uh, pooped out in the middle and I did not have my backup recorder on, which I just realized I also did not have my backup recorder on. There we go. Um, and so there are a couple of spots of dead air. So I edited those out and you won't, you'll just hear the, the little conversation jump, but it has just been three weeks in a row of audio errors, which for an audio podcast, not great. So hopefully um, we will have that all straightened out this week. So if I got like the first, you know, three or four minutes down on YouTube, I can splice Audacity in. Uh, but it just being out of the out of the saddle for a couple weeks, I forgot to fire that up. So, and honestly, I've been I've had good luck. So, uh, but anyway, we should hopefully get that caught up. I'm traveling again tomorrow. Got a couple of things going on, but we'll we'll hopefully get this all caught up pretty soon. But uh, thanks for your patience. And again, the MP3s are out there, so we need to, uh, to look at that. Um, all right, let's go on to topics. Another piece of debt that I have, uh, not 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 podcast debt in this point, but uh, here we are, April. No, here we are, May. And uh, so it's been uh, three months and some change since my birthday. Now, my birthday is very festive. A lot of places get the Monday around my birthday off. It's a, it's a government holiday, these kind of things. 
But also, one of the things we do around here at the SharePoint uh, podcast is we do a charity drive. And this year, I, in, in an effort to get you guys to post or to, uh, <laughs> to donate more money, I offered to match your donations. And you guys did a tremendous job this year, blowing everybody's expectations out of the water. You guys pitched in and donated $3,500 to various charities uh, here and there. And that, uh, that was awesome. I was impressed. And so I, I told you I'd hold up to my end of the deal. And I would also uh, match that and donate $3,500 to various charities uh, to match that. And uh, then I forgot about it. So in the meantime, since I've done that with my wife and I've donated to various things, but I've never come to you guys and straightened this debt. So I got the checkbook and let me cover all the numbers so y'all don't write checks uh, with my thing or doodle checkbook. So uh, what I've decided uh, I got $3,500 that I owe you guys and I've got a bunch of charities that I give to and I've done a bunch this year. But right now, as of today, there's three that I want to give to. So I'm going to split it up. Uh, the first one is a place called Food at First and it is a place here in Ames that provides free meals to citizens of Ames, whether you need it or not, they give you free meals. My family and I donate there. We also donate time. We volunteered there on Thanksgiving and Christmas, serving meals and cleaning up and just helping out. Great bunch of folks, uh, food at first, love those guys. So they get $1,000, all right? So food at first, and then the next one, is a place here in Ames. Also, I kind of I was on a local charity thing. Uh, this one is Youth and Shelter Services. Now they obviously shelter youths and uh, things like that, but they also do a bunch of things. They do like uh, they, they have a Christmas present drives. We do that in the in the fall. You can adopt a family and buy the family Christmas presents. Love that. Uh, so we do that, and they have like a backpack thing, and where they kids they don't have backpack for school they give them backpacks and and all that kind of stuff so youth and shelter services congratulations you're going to be getting checked for a thousand dollars so let's go ahead and do that and then finally in a similar vein uh, the town that i grew up in Sac City, Iowa, they have an education foundation. Small town, rural town, uh, declining town, as, as many rural towns here in Iowa are. And they have an education foundation where they award college scholarships to seniors that go to the school that I graduated from. Yes, I did graduate high school. My uh, grammar and all that may suggest otherwise, but I do have a, a diploma and all that. So I contribute to those guys, donate from here and there. So those guys, they're getting a check to. That's the Sac community. This one's a long one. We got a, quite a handle here. Community education. We're going to call that EDU uh, foundation. F U N D letters, letters, letters. Uh, those guys, they get $1,500 because uh, they're putting kids through college. And I like that. So uh, those guys get a check too. Now I'll fill the rest of that out and put the dates and all that and get those mail. Uh, but I apologize to you guys. This this has come up. My wife and I have talked about this a hundred times since you guys graciously donated money in January, and I keep forgetting to do this. And I wanted to do it on air so you guys could see that I, you know, not not that you don't trust me, but just it's, it's a thing. It's a thing we have here. So I got these checks. So this one and the other one. And again, if you get the check numbers off it, please don't write any checks on my account. Um, but I will send those out this week. So thanks again, and I expect next year to not be able to match your funds because I expect it to be even greater. So again, my apologies for uh, my truancy and my, my delay on that. Now on to happier things. Last Wednesday, I was sitting around minding my own business, and I noticed a thing pop up in my calendar. It was a calendar invitation from the Microsoft Cloud Show guys, my buddies Andrew Connell and Chris Johnson, though they go by AC and CJ, so I made them refer to me as TK so that we, we were all going by the initial things while we did this. But those guys have a great uh, podcast that they talk about Cloud Show things, and you can go to... Oh my God, I actually have the link and I shut my browser down. MicrosoftCloudShow.com. And they talk about all kinds of fun things there. And they they know that SharePoint's coming out. There's this future SharePoint event next week. And they wanted to talk to somebody about SharePoint. And apparently all the good people and the smart people were already taken. And so they settled for me. So I got to spend uh, an hour or an hour and a half with those guys. Great friends. We, we have been friends for a decade. We've done all kinds of things together. Uh, Andrew and I got to see a shuttle launch in Orlando a bunch of years ago off of a tech ed event. And we chat all the time. 
Andrew has a Tesla Model S and a, a local buddy of mine bought a Model S and I hooked those two up. And so a lot of times I get caught in email threads where they're both uh, bagging on me. So that's, that's good fun. Everybody loves that. So again, we just, we have, we've got a long history and it was, uh, it was a great time catching up with those guys talking about SharePoint and all that. And CJ, whose Twitter handle is LoungeflyZ, posted, he was not apparently paying attention or helping out, but uh, we had a good time. Andrew uh, had, had a good time. The end of it is really good. You got to listen to the whole thing. I don't know how they're going to edit it out. And it's going to be out, I think not this week, but next week. You'll have to have to listen to the end. I know podcasts get long and they get boring, but you gotta, you gotta listen to like the last five minutes. Those uh, pictures that CJ posted are from the last five minutes. We, we got, uh, we got some good stuff going on, but that will be coming out. So you can go to microsoftcloudshow.com and sign up for that. And, and you can find their, their podcast in Google play and iTunes and stitch and all those other places. And it was just a good time to catch up with those guys, chat about SharePoint 2016, what it means on prem, what it means in the cloud. It was uh, it was a good time. I would, I would do that every week of those guys that have me because it was just a blast. Good times with all of that. Speaking of the SharePoint and the future thereof, we are less than 48 hours away from the future of SharePoint event. Now, if you haven't already signed up for that, uh, it's probably too late because I'll probably get this out on Thursday morning and you won't be able to, but go to aka.ms slash future of SharePoint. Sign up for this event. It is totally free, completely free, free as in beer. Sign up for that. It's going to be live streamed. It starts at uh, 11 a.m. Pacific Daylight Time, so 1 o'clock, uh, the correct time zone here. And it's Microsoft put it on. It's going to be a couple hours, and they are going to, not surprisingly, tell us about the future of SharePoint. Now, there were some times that SharePoint, uh, the, the future of SharePoint a few years ago looked kind of grim, kind of dark. It was kind of scary times to be a SharePoint guy. This is not that time. It is a great time to be a SharePoint professional. When I spoke at Dev Intersection a couple weeks ago, I was in a session and somebody in the classroom was like, you know, is, is this a good, you know, should we, should we get in SharePoint on-prem? Do, do I have to look for a job? And I'm like, you, th there's never been a better time to do SharePoint than right now. You are in the right spot. And the future, this future of SharePoint event is going to show a bunch of things. Now they've told us a lot about what's going to be in SharePoint 2016 or what's in SharePoint 2016. There's a lot they haven't told us and we're going to find out about it on Wednesday. So sign up for the future of SharePoint event. It's going to be live streamed all over the internets. So uh, you can watch that. But also a few of us at Rackspace have signed up for a live blogging um, account. And so if you go to sharepoint.rackspace.com slash live dash event, we are going to be doing that. So it's going to be myself and John Ross and Randy Driscoll and Jason Himmelstein. We're all, as we're watching this event, we're going to give you our thoughts and, and all that. And we would love to hear what you guys have to say. So go ahead and check that out. And again, free event. If you're in the SharePoint ecosystem, you can't miss this. There's going to be some huge things chatted about in that. Uh, Jeff Teeper, I think, is uh, is the guy that announced that he's back, back in the saddle. He's going to be talking about the future of SharePoint. I could not... Um, could not be more excited about this event. I, I'm really excited. As a guy who's been doing SharePoint for 13 years now, something like that, this is a big deal, and I'm, I'm super excited about it. Um, okay, so sign up for that one if you haven't already. I'll wait for a minute. Okay, all right, good. Um, so another thing that came out, and I, I almost forgot this. I can't believe I almost didn't put this in my note. Another great time to be in SharePoint, another reason to be great in SharePoint, is last week on Friday, Microsoft released um, a blog post that talks about, well, it's called Power to the People, Introducing Microsoft Flow and Announcing the Public Preview of Power Apps. Now, Power Apps, they've, they've been talking about for a while. Power Apps is this ability to write applications with a, with a friendly UI. Again, power to the people. You don't have to fire up Visual Studio to write things that can interact with SharePoint and, and, and all these other things. And it's been uh, fun to watch. Now, it was in a private preview before. So part of this announcement was the public preview of Power Apps. So you can sign up for that, get an account, and create your own Power Apps. It is amazing. Even an idiot like me can create meaningful applications. And we're talking for Power Apps, we're talking like mobile device apps, things like that. 
great way to consume SharePoint data, things like that, and take advantage of you know your hardware and, and your mobile things, things like that. That's pretty cool. The fact that Power Apps is out there and now is available for everybody, that's pretty cool. Now, Microsoft could have stopped there. They could have just said that. They could have said, we've got uh, we've got Power Apps. Everybody gets Power Apps. Now it's just a select few that had Power Apps. Now everybody gets it. Thank you and have a nice day. They could have done that. They could have left us at that and they wouldn't have owed us another thing. But they did one more. And they actually kind of led with this, which was pretty cool. This new thing called Microsoft Flow. Microsoft Flow is an interesting time. So I've been upgrading a bunch of my gadgets and hardware and things here at home. And, you know, I talked last week about the uh, Echo Dot and those kind of things. One of the services that's been around forever, been around for a coon's age, but I just started using a month or two ago, is a service called If This Than That, or I-F-T-T-T. If This Than That is a cloud service that is exactly like it sounds, it's a recipe service. And you create recipes that say, if this happens, then this should happen, make this happen. The power of is If This Than That is its integration with other systems. So the way that I used it, uh, I've used it for a few things, but I've got some Wemo remote controlled power outlets and things inside of the house. I talked about that with the Amazon dot, I can control them with the Echo. But I can also do if this, then that recipes with them. And one of the ones that I can do is a time-based one. So I can say, if the time equals 7.45 a.m., then turn this switch on. If the time equals 5.30 p.m., then turn this switch off. And it control lights and things like that. But there are a million things. And depending on the services you hook it up to, uh, Gmail, all I mean, there's just an, an amazing number of things that you can do with if this, then that. Pretty cool. Now back to the Microsoft thing. So Microsoft says, here's Power Apps. Have some Power Apps, write that up. But we're introducing you to this thing called Microsoft Flow. And a good way to think about Microsoft Flow is kind of the Microsoft version of this than that. What their, their official line is, is, is like a workflow platform to work across software as a service services that people are on. So you'll be able to write workflows and hook into uh, OneDrive and Dropbox and all those kind of things and SharePoint and do event-based things like if this, then that. So I recommend uh, checking them both out. If this, then that, ifttt.com, check that out. It took me forever, M much like anything that I ever play with, unless I've got a purpose, a thing I can do with it, it's boring to me. So I checked if this, then that out a couple of years ago and went, yep, I get it. You do the thing and then something else pops out in the other and I can't think of a single thing to do with it. And I remember at the time uh, when I was looking at it, Laura Rogers had some stuff set up and she dug in. She's, she's more curious about those things than I am. And she was doing all kinds of crazy things. Like she had a lamp at her desk that would flash when somebody tweeted to her, um, those kind of things. And I'm like, yeah, I, I mean, I get that a light flashes and someone tweets to you. I have no value with that and I just completely dismissed it. And then finally something came up and uh, it, it, uh, it, it, it got, got my attention and now it's pretty cool. So now I'm doing things with it because I've got the, uh, um, the integration and things like that. So, but the Microsoft Flow, a Microsoft version of that, I haven't played with it much yet, but I think, uh, I think that's gonna be cool. So cool week last week, good time to be in uh, SharePoint land and all that. So funny, and I, didn't, I don't have this on my notes, but I'll go ahead and add it. We've got a, a couple of minutes here. Y'all just heard my phone go off and I don't have the editing skills to make that to stop. I am sporting a new phone this week. So last week I was sporting an old phone. And the old phone was, well, now it's not doing a thing. The old phone was a Samsung Galaxy S5. And that is uh, this little devil here. I'd had him for a while. This was the phone that I used uh, when I got off of Windows Phone. Sad days indeed, but uh, pretty decent. Treated me pretty well. It's a couple years old, uh, and it's a couple models old, obviously, uh, the S5, and then there was the S6 and the S7. And... For a while, this this phone's been getting older. It's been getting slower. I did a factory refresh on it. I think I talked about that last week uh, with the Google Authenticator bit. And if I didn't, well, I'm going to tell it again. Everybody should use two-factor authentication with everything you can. OneDrive has it. Dropbox has it. Google has it. I was using it. I use it all over. With Google, the way that I had it set up was anytime a new device logs into a Google service under my name, you have to run the Google Authenticator app on my phone and uh, get a code. 
Um, and then I wiped the phone. <laughs> so then I couldn't get the code and all that. That was because that phone was getting slow and I tried a factory refresh. Well, I did a factory refresh, it didn't help a lot. So last week I talked myself into buying a bright, shiny new uh, Galaxy S7. Ooh, look at that Galaxy S7, shiny. So uh, I've had this phone for a week now. Very happy with it. Very happy with it. It does a bunch of things that I like. You can see it's got the glance-like um, display that I love from my my Lumia 920 from 100 years ago. And it's just got a, a bunch of stuff. It, it's fast. It's got a, features. I've got apps. And Lori and I were chatting about this earlier. And she was mentioning that she uh, also has some... Um, She's got an Android phone and she has more Microsoft apps on her Android phone than she had on her Windows phone. And that's absolutely true. So there's like, I've got the Office 365 admin app. I've got OneDrive. I've got all that stuff. Uh, I love the phone. So fast. It's it's heavy. It's sturdy. It's apparently waterproof, though I haven't really gotten the uh, the nerve to test that yet. But apparently that it is. And uh, it's got an SD slot, which the S6 does not have. The S5 does. I keep a lot of music and stuff on my phone. Um, but really liking that. But um, I signed up for If This Then That. And so I've got the If This Then That thing on here on my phone and the Wemo app so I can do all those things. Things I wouldn't have been able to enjoy if I would have stuck with Windows Phone. Oh, and Lori points out water resistant, not waterproof. Probably why it's a good reason I haven't showered with my phone or anything yet because I uh, thought it was waterproof and not water resistant. But anyway, uh, big fan of the Galaxy S7. And um, I'm on AT&T, so it was pretty easy to swap my uh, my SIMs out. Mark Christman in the chat room talks about the uh, S7 Edge. I looked at that one. I actually looked at the S6 Edge when it came out. So this one screen goes just like it is, um, like every phone. The uh, S6 and S7 Edge, the screen actually wraps around, and you can set it down and have you know indicators on the side. I looked at that. I didn't get that for two reasons. Number one, it was $100 more. And number two... With the S6, I know some folks that had problems with theirs. It would The glass would break on the corner, and I just couldn't think of a more expensive piece of phone glass to replace than one of those, and so I didn't uh, I didn't do it. Uh, and Lori does mention, yeah, the uh, Edge screen is bigger. This one is about the same size screen-wise as my S5, uh, so that uh, that's not... Uh, that was easy enough to keep track of, but loving the phone. Again, I've only had like a week, so we know how that goes, but lots of apps, lots of cool things I can do on there. All right. Uh, big week. Obviously, we got the Power Apps and the Microsoft Flow. We got the future SharePoint event and SharePoint GAing uh, two days from now, 48 hours, less than 48 hours. Another great announcement today was that SQL Server 2016 will be coming your way on June 1st. So we're looking less than a month out for that. This SharePoint folks, we have to keep up on things like SQL and, and all that. So I wanted to let you guys know about that for a couple of reasons. Number one, you got to start working on that, thinking about your upgrade, whether you're going to or not. If you've got software assurance, these are considerations, things like that. But for uh, for us, there's a few interesting things. In the blog post that the SQL team wrote, or they're the information platform team, they wrote that SQL Server 2016 is the first born in the cloud version of SQL. And I read that and thought, does that sound familiar or what? As SharePoint 2016 is the first born in the cloud version of SharePoint. So I like that. I like where they're going. Uh, so, so check out it. It's on blogs.technet.com slash data platform insider. You can get that or other show notes at uh, toddclint.com slash podcast 291. Bunch of interesting things in there. They've got the new features that are coming out in SQL uh, 2016. This version of SQL has four SKUs, Enterprise, Standard, Express, and then the free developer one, which is like Express, but you can't use it in production. Uh, so go out there and read about those things. Uh, the reason I, and the other reason that I bring this up is because SharePoint 2016 uh, the SharePoint has always supported the N and N minus one versions of SQL. So SharePoint has always supported whatever is current and in the previous version. Right now, uh, SharePoint 2016 supports SQL 2012 R2, which is the N version. When this one comes out, it will, uh, SharePoint 2016 will support it. But more importantly, if you're going to do any of the BI things in SharePoint 2016, I'm talking Power Pivot, reporting services, things like that, they will require SQL Server 2016. So as SharePoint admins, that's an important reason to pay attention to this because if you're going to do those new BI things, you need SQL Server 2016 to do those. Now, 
That does not mean that all of your content databases and everything need to be in SQL Server 2016. But if you're going to do the BI stuff, the BI platform requires SQL Server 2016. SharePoint can handle multiple SQL instances. It can do, you know, have databases in different instances, things like that. So you can have a SQL 2013 instance with your content databases and a SQL 2016 instance. Excuse me, you can have a SQL 2012 R2 instance. Um, with your content databases and your a SQL 2016 instance doing BI work. So you can add it in, uh, in, in layers like that, but good time to get out there. I think, uh, I know enough SQL folks that I might have one of them come on, uh, and not, not next week. Cause we'll be talking about SharePoint 2016 next week, but maybe the week after that, talk to one of those guys and see if we can have them come on and talk about uh, what's new in SQL. If you guys are interested in that, uh, let me know. Um, oh, and I did want to link the differences. There's a PDF that Microsoft has on the different versions and, uh, and what's going to be in, uh, in, a, in each of them. Uh, but there's some good stuff in there. Uh, one last bit here before I close out. I saw this one come across the wire today, and I wanted to um, chat with you guys about this. So one of the things that gets a lot of uh, traffic on my blog is this little thing. I don't know if I've talked about it before, but I've got a couple of blog posts and a couple of pages on my blog, quiet little things, nothing too ostentatious that have the different versions of SharePoint 2010, 2013, 2016. So you can go to toddclinton.com slash SP 2010 builds, SP 2016 builds or SP uh, 2013 builds and find out the different versions. Microsoft has a page out that has the version numbers for Office 365, which is um, which is kind of interesting. So we can see it's got the uh, current channel, the deferred channel, the first release uh, for deferred channel, all those different things. So you can go to technet.com uh, or technet.microsoft.com and see that. So that's a nice compliment, especially when we start talking about getting into hybrid scenarios and knowing, you know, we got to know what, what version of on-prem we have, but knowing when problems sneak into Office 365, uh, it's good to know which version we can see with that when it came out, you know, so, so this one, for instance, mentions that a new current channel build came out April 12th. So if we're looking at things and April 11th, everything worked and April 13th, it didn't, you go back and look at this list and go, I think, I think I know where it's at. Um, so that's a good thing. And I'll uh, put links in the show notes for that. But I was, it was, I've never looked for that page before, but I'm glad to see that it's out there and it goes back to September. So it's got, uh, got a lot of fun things in there. Um, and I guess, oh, now that I look at this, it's for the clients. It's not for the, uh, for the, the website. So interesting. Uh, so it's for Word, Excel, all those uh, kind of things. All right, uh, let's talk about promotion. Everybody likes promotion. Everybody likes it. And uh, so I've got a few things I would like to chat in our, our final few minutes together. Uh, the first, I still plan on talking to the Oklahoma City SharePoint user group. And that's going to be sometime in June or July, something like that. I got to get, get with Bruce and get that straightened out. I was going to do it on Wednesday, but uh, but got busy. And I think I'm going to talk to them about PowerShell with Office 365, a very popular session that I've been doing a lot lately. Uh, more people are getting into Office 365. The PowerShell story is getting better. And so more people want to hear about that. So I'll be speaking to them. In June, I will be speaking at SP TechCon. That one is out in Boston. So you can go to SP sptechcon.com and sign up for that. Uh, I will be out there. I'm not sure if we're going to have a booth. I'm not sure what the, the, the schedule is on that, but I'll be around. I haven't made my flights yet, so I'm not sure when I'm going to be there. But if you, if you end up at SP TechCon in Boston, for goodness sakes, come find me, shake my hand, introduce yourself, all those kind of things. I would love to hear from you, chat with anybody who's ever met me in person. I'm super friendly. Uh, come find me. I'll be doing my configuring uh, Active Directory, Azure Active Directory sync session and PowerShell with SharePoint Online. I'll be doing both of those. And then it's a long ways out, long, long ways out. Probably a lot of things between now and then that'll happen. But October 27th and 28th, I will be in Stockholm, Sweden, one of my favorite cities on the entire planet. I've been asked to speak again at the SharePoint Exchange Forum, or uh, CEF, this year. And it uh, I love that. I, I, there was no CEF last year because of some other conferences going on. And I missed it dearly. I was jealous of every single citizen of Stockholm that they got to be there, and I didn't for that, uh, for that time. But we're back this year, October 27th and 28th. Uh, if you're in Stockholm or in Scandinavia or any of those countries, 
and your SharePoint person or exchange person, you got to swing by. Yoren Huseman, friend of mine, put that on. He does a tremendous job. He takes great care of the of the delegates that show up. He takes great care of the speakers. It's just a, a great time all the way around. And I'll be there. And again, I'll be uh, you know signing babies, all that kind of thing. So I don't know what I'm going to be speaking about yet. Yoren and I are kind of uh, going back and forth on that. But once I know, I will add it. Well, folks, I always try to keep this thing at 30 minutes, and it looks like I'm almost exactly at that. So thanks, everybody. I will endeavor to get these things produced and out as quickly as I can so you don't have to wait, and I'll get all caught up, and I will chat with you next week. Hopefully, we will be able to find something to chat about after this coming Wednesday. So thanks, everybody. Have a good week. Chat room, stick around. I, uh, I will chat with you for a bit. Uh, but you guys uh, out on the, the podcast and, uh, world and all that, I will see you guys next week.